Jura is, after all, the Ten Tails himself. Gara and Shinki were defeated and became part of the tree. However, Boruto still managed to escape. Enjoy watching. In the manga, we didn't see any epic scenes, but there was a lot of dialogue. In the previous chapter, the main character was captured, and now, in the interrogation room, they are literally beating information out of him, although initially, they tried to behave more politely. During the interrogation, Boruto acts very arrogantly. It's clear that the training with Uchiha has greatly influenced his personality. He talks about how the only way to save the planet is not just by defeating the tree people, who were created from the chakra of the shinobi that were turned into trees, but most importantly, by defeating Jura, who is not anyone's copy, since he is the Ten Tails himself. Basically, as we expected, since Jura stood out not only for his power, but it was immediately obvious that he was the leader, and his words that he is a tailed beast, like Kurama, practically hinted right away that he was the Ten Tails. The conversation with Boruto is interrupted by the elders, who, in essence, should have been long dead. They have outlived nearly all the Hokage, and to be honest, I don't fully understand why they are still in power. It would have been much simpler if Kakashi and Tsunade had taken their place, but that's politics, and the Fire Country's feudal lord rules through them. Neither Tsunade nor Kakashi are particularly eager to take their place, and these old people still live in the past, considering everyone around them as traitors. They treat Boruto accordingly, even when the main character says that Naruto is alive, as is his wife, and that they are currently in a safe place, they don't want to believe it, and couldn't care less whether the Hokage is alive or not, because they threaten to kill Boruto, even though they have the chance to bring back the seventh, but they don't care about that. So these elders have taken on Danzo's role, as those who will do anything for the village. Regarding Naruto's death, we are shown how much the main character cares about about his adopted brother Kawaki, because the accusations that the seventh died at Boruto's hands are not omnipotence, it's just Kawaki's words. To put it simply, this lie can be exposed without any problems, and everyone will believe it if there is some proof. But Boruto doesn't say anything about it, thus protecting his brother. This even surprises Demon, Ida's brother, who hoped Boruto would reveal everything and that Kawaki would be in trouble. But the topic of the conversation changes, and Ibiki begins to beat information out of Boruto. And this is when Shikamaru intervenes, trying to save the main character. Character. He starts to remember information that is being erased from his memory. He doesn't recall why he believes Boruto is good, as omnipotence is trying to break his mind. But he decides to trust his gut, and without giving reasons, save Boruto. However, Ino refuses to create a private channel for communication between him and the main character. This is very strange to me because Ino grew up with Shikamaru. They were friends from childhood, and she knows him well enough to understand his actions, and that he would never do anything against the village. Moreover, he is the Hokage's deputy, but she acts as if they aren't friends, justifying it with the rules. Here it becomes very clear that we have two different authors because the character is now fixated on things that were previously uncharacteristic for her. Meanwhile, Boruto remains silent and endures the beatings because he doesn't want to reveal very important information about how he knows everything about the Ten Tails and the Tree People, because Kashin Koji himself doesn't want anyone to know about him. Essentially, Koji is now the most important character, and his Shinjutsu, which allows him to see the future, is the only way to save the world. Amato thinks Koji is dead and probably doesn't even suspect that Shinjutsu has awakened in him, although he listens to all the information Boruto is sharing. Shikamaru realizes that Boruto cannot die here, so he asks Mitsuki to use poison on Boruto, and as soon as Orochimaru's son enters the room, Boruto starts making fun of him, causing Mitsuki to attack him. But I think we all understand perfectly well that this was staged, and at the moment of the attack, Mitsuki's snake unlocks the handcuffs that prevented Boruto from using seals. Thanks to this, the main character escapes, not forgetting to move to another room to retrieve his katana and cloak. All the responsibility for Boruto's escape falls on Shikamaru, and there will be consequences. I'm curious what they will be. Will he be stripped of his position? Fine. He shouldn't be the Hokage. Who will they choose instead? Kakashi, who would be the best option? Or Tsunade? Or will one of these elders want to take the position? We still don't know the consequences that await the Hokage's deputy, but something must happen. Finally, we are told some more important information thanks to Kankuro. Gara and his son Shinki were defeated. As a result, a new tree man appeared, very similar to Shinki. However, it was hinted to us that Gara himself was also turned into a tree. And perhaps the new enemy that has appeared is a fusion of Shinki and Gara. Unfortunately, we will get the answer only in the next chapter. We also saw Inojin being treated by Sakura. It turns out that Himawari healed him almost perfectly. It's just necessary to unlock the chakra points, as they were essentially destroyed due to the huge hole in his chest. And I have a feeling that Himawari might become Sakura's student in the future, and even inherit her Byakugo seal, just like it happened with Mito Uzumaki. I'll be waiting for you in the comments because I'm curious to to discuss what happened in the chapter. Good luck to everyone.